Welcome. We have senior basketball analyst game for uh, finals recap. And it, it, you know, there's no reason to beat around the bush. This was a terrible basketball game. It was horrible. Um, and this is going to happen. This is not something that's unprecedented or anything like that. This happens from time to time. From time to time, you know, you have a game where there's just nothing really there really worth seeing. Um, you know, there was a couple of nice highlight plays. Um, you know, Iguodala had a couple of nice dunks. Uh, one where he, he kind of stepped through traffic. And, um, his ability to do that, and, and this is a game right now, you know, I, just just anecdotally, you know, I, I was playing NBA Jam, you know, uh, a few days ago, and the NBA is just right now is devoid of, it, it's 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 not not devoid, it doesn't have as many of the big time dunkers as it has had at the same time in the past. You know, the, the, there was a time when, um, you know, we had Jason Richardson, Vince Carter, uh, Richard Jefferson. Um, Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, we had all of these guys that were guys that could, you know, really not not either be very flashy with their dunks in traffic or just dunk in traffic in ways that other guys. There was a time where Sean Marion, it was part of his skill set that he could basically catch an alley oop at any time. He could be standing right under the basket at six seven, and you could just throw it up to him, and that was an alley. That was a dunk. Um, Steve Nash got a lot of assists that way. So did Stephon Mar Marbury. Um, th that was a feature of his game. Um, and you know, now he's old and, and I, I bring up Sean Marion in particular because Sean Marion has to play. This is getting stupid. And it's, it's, it's finally getting a little bit of play in the media, but, uh, we've been talking about it here on senior basketball analyst. Um, you know, the, the, there's no reason he's not playing. And for Mike Miller to be playing instead of him, that's just one of those inexplicable coaching decisions that I really don't understand. Mike Miller was at one time a nice player and he has no value these days. He adds nothing to the lineup when he's in the game. He can't guard his man. He doesn't really hit his jump shots anymore. He just doesn't have any value. Um, I, I, I don't, I just don't understand why he's playing instead of Marion. Um, I don't get it. I, I also don't get why Marion just isn't playing anyway, even if you played Mike Miller. I don't know why he's not playing, given especially as, you know, drag ass as Cleveland was, uh, you know, in game four. They looked dead. They looked dead on arrival. Even when they were up 7-0, they looked dead. They were just moving very slowly. They were just hitting some jump shots, you know, they were hitting some shots. So in the beginning of the game, it, it kind of masked the fact that they were moving, they were moving very slowly. And if, if Cleveland has to um, beat the, the Golden State Warriors from a hustle point of view to win games, they have to. And LeBron looked dead tired. Uh, everybody did. Everybody did. Like, I'm not even, you can't even put this game on anybody. The only guy that looked okay was, was, was Timothy Mozgov. And he ended up with 28 points, um, another career high. He's getting career highs all over this team. And it just highlights, uh, it highlights the, the, the one of the things I'm going to talk about in, in this, you know, episode, you know, Andrew Bogut is just useless as a basketball player. He has, he provides nothing. He provides nothing to the game materially. He provides nothing to the game from an entertainment point of view. After the game, he says stupid things. He just doesn't add anything to the game. He's just a guy that's taller than everybody else, you know, in terms of him being seven feet tall. And there he is making millions of dollars. That's all he is. He's not, he doesn't add anything from a, a basketball perspective. He just doesn't add anything. And, you know, for him to be all defense again, we said it at the time, but this is just, it's ridiculous. When, when a guy is getting career highs all series long against you and he keeps improving, um, finally to the point where they actually benched him. Uh, you know, Andre Iguodala um, finally got, you know, finally in the starting lineup and it's paying dividends. And we talked about it. You know, you got to bench Bogut. 
Andre Iguodala has to be featured. And these bad starts, and we've, we've talked about this too before, these bad starts where Harrison Barnes just gives up straight line dribble drives for buckets from LeBron, you know, gives up these post-ups where he can't hold his ground, can't stop LeBron from getting right. Like LeBron will post him up and then, you know, take a power dribble right into the middle of the lane from four feet away and shoot a right-hand jump hook. That's that's a layup. That's giving up a layup. And Harrison Barnes just has no ability to deal with him. And and so we're seeing, you know, we're, we're seeing the, the Kerr and his coaching staff finally make an adjustment and stop allowing LeBron to establish these rhythms right at the beginning of the game like that put Iguodala on him the whole game. And this was a rare, rare case, a rare case where LeBron actually got outplayed. He actually got outplayed, and that's why it was a blowout. That's why it didn't matter. Mozgov can get as many points as he wants. If LeBron gets outplayed, the game is over. And it's not just it's not just over like you're going to lose by 10. It's over you're going to lose by 20 or 30. You're going to get you're going to get blown off the, off the floor. Um Andre Iguodala, we can't say enough about how good this dude is. Um and, and it's important, too, that he stayed ready. It's very impressive, man. He stayed ready. He stayed ready. Um, it's difficult. It, it, takes, it takes just a commitment to professionalism to um, stay ready to play starters minutes when you have been demoted. That's, that's, that's impressive. And not only is he ready from a physical point of view, he's mentally ready. And he's ready for the toughest cover at his position. Um, and LeBron James, one of the greatest players of all time. And uh, he actually outplayed him in the game. They've gotten everything they could ask for out of Iguodala in this series. And he's putting them in position to win the series. Um, this was by no means a must-win game. The Golden State could have gone down 3-1 and still come back, especially given the fatigue factor. Cleveland being fatigued and having such a short rotation, having guys not only in a short rotation, but they have to play so hard just to uh, be able to compete. This was uh, um, this was not, this was by no means no stretch of imagination a must win game. But um, Ig Iguodala has put them in a position in, in, in both of their wins. He's put them in position, he's put them in great position to win both times with timely defensive stops, timely buckets, they have to stop. Cleveland has to stop too with this Tim Fay Mozgov Garden Andre Iguodala. It's stupid. It's stupid, and they keep giving up. Like one, of, they keep they the first thing that happens as soon as they do that matchup is Iguodala. You know, within three possessions, he's going to get a run out dunk. He's going to get a run out breakout dunk where he beats the field, and then you can't. Why give that basket away? Why give up open threes to this guy? Why? Why? Look. Iguodala is not a great score, but he's proving to you that this is a stupid idea by hitting shots, getting dunks on the break. Guard him with a perimeter player. Why are you putting Mozgov on him? I don't understand that. I, I don't like that's one of those inexplicable coaching decisions that I just flat out don't get. Um, it, 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 it's silly. I don't get it. And, and, you know, I guess they, it, it, to me, what it is, to me, it's like Blatt giving, you know, actually, I'm not even going to say it's Blatt because who cares about him? This is LeBron and, and Tyron Lu giving the matchup back. So you win the matchup. You beat Bogut so badly that Kerr removes him. You know, Gentry, Kerr, and Ron Adams remove this clown from the lineup. They finally just say, forget it. This guy that can't score or defend, we're just not going to play him anymore, which is, you know, what should happen to a basketball player that can't score or defend because that's basically the game stopping baskets and getting baskets. Um, but they take him out of the lineup and then you then do something stupid to counter that instead of just playing your game and just keeping the win. <laughs> I don't un I don't understand that. And, and the last thing I'll say about Bogut is this, this is the kind of this encapsulated, not only what's wrong with this encapsulated something that's really wrong with the NBA right now. Bogut comes in the game. They find he finally checks in, in the second quarter. And I don't really know why he was checking in because really I would DMP that guy. I wouldn't play him at all. 
I would play David Lee as, as your, you know, small ball five. And I play Maurice Spates and I wouldn't play. And then if I want to go real small, play Draymond Green at the five, I would not play this dude at all because he adds no value. Um, they're only the only, you know, true seven foot five that the Cleveland Cavaliers have. He can't guard him at all. And this dude doesn't shoot outside the restricted area. You know, mo- almost all of his points come on layups and free throws. So there's no reason he shouldn't be able to guard him other than him being bad. But Bogut comes in the game. Curry drops a dime to him, hits him right in the numbers with it. He drops it because he's bad. He has bad hands, too. But in addition to the other attributes about the game, he's one of these big guys that catch the ball. He drops the ball. Then, on the other end, LeBron comes to the basket, and he puts kind of a goonish foul on him relative to today's game. It wasn't dirty or anything. He just, he just didn't have to be. It was just kind of a necessary kind of foul with a little bit of unnecessary contact. It wasn't necessary. And nowadays, I have seen guys get called for flagrance for that. I've seen them do it. Um, I didn't think it was flagrant or excessive, but that's the way that the game is being called now. So when it doesn't get called, I wonder, well, why didn't that one get called? Then after the game, instead of just saying nothing when they asked him about it, or instead of saying, you know, hey, you know, he, he cut his head, you know, you never want to see a guy get hurt. You know, I hope he's all right. He says LeBron jumped into the cameraman. Andrew Bogut, Andrew Bogut, you dumb, dumb man. You big, dumb, bad basketball player. What do you mean he jumped into the cameraman? That's that's just, that's so stupid. That's just a dumb, stupid thing to say. And, you know, I don't really know what else to say about it other than because it's so un- inexplicably stupid. It's just a stupid, foolish thing to say. And not because there's going to be any consequences for it, because a guy like Andrew Bogut, there's nothing you can do to him. You, he's walking up and down the court. He clearly doesn't care if his team wins the game. The money is already going into the bank account, contract guaranteed. You can't do anything to this guy. He doesn't have any endorsements to speak of where he's going to make anybody mad. So, you know, it there's there's no there's no consequences for this guy but even it's a stupid thing to say because it's just wrong it just it's incorrect he didn't jump into the cameraman dude he fell awkwardly and then hit a cameraman because the cameraman shouldn't be there and it's all stupid and what i wonder is how many hall of fame players have to have run-ins with cameramen or get injured by cameramen before the NBA moves these guys with these hun- these cameras are hundreds of thousands of dollars, I believe. <laughs> but uh, regardless, these cameras, them being 15 feet further back would not hurt the shots at all. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt the, the footage you get at all, at all, not one bit. This is not the old days where we were de- dealing with standard definition. You know these these cameras. You you could you could step back with a camera phone and film half of this stuff. Like there's no reason for them to be that close, other than complete disregard for the athlete's safety. Complete disregard. Chris Paul, if you remember, tore his knee up on a cameraman. I remember when Dennis Rodman, and this was the only time I ever saw Dennis Rodman put his hands on anybody in anger when he kicked that cameraman. Because if you fall into a camera when you're playing basketball. You may lose it. You may lose it because it's completely unnecessary. If you're playing pickup ball and somebody's standing too close to the sideline, you'd be like, man, what you standing there for? You tell them to get back. And, and, and then in the NBA at the highest level, you have these people with gigantic pieces of hard plastic and metal sitting on their shoulders mere feet from the court, just a few feet from the court. It's inexcusable inexcusable it's like when paul george broke his leg on the stanchion in that silly summer league nonsense they do where they go overseas and pretend that that matters stupid stupid first of all you shouldn't be playing in it because you don't get paid you get you get paid to play basketball why are you playing basketball competitively for free you're not getting paid i don't i don't understand that i i really don't it's not for charity so why are you playing i don't get that I don't get that. And don't don't tell me anything about, you know, 
oh, this is for America. That's so dumb. It's a sporting event. It's, it doesn't have any significance in terms of patriotism or anything like that. That's, that's foolish. That's a, that's a silly way of looking at it. That's, that's kind of the thing that maybe USA basketball, people that run that want you to think that so you'll support their products and, and put money in their pocket. But I mean, most people in the country don't care about basketball either way. They certainly don't care about USA basketball. And why should they? It's just a game. <laughs> like, why should they? So these dudes playing for free makes no sense to me anyway. Makes zero sense. And then Paul George endangers his leg. You know, you have a compound fracture like that, you could lose your leg. <laughs> like, he 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 really endangered his he endangered his ability to walk with that nonsense plan where the 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 playing court is not um is not configured for a professional game shouldn't be playing and the NFL players association or uh NBA uh players association needs to see about that they need to see about these cameras being too close Anybody being too close to the field of play, these courts where the you'll see where the court is up here. And then when you step off to the end of the bench, it's like this and it's down here again. What is the purpose of that other than to get somebody injured? I don't understand this, man. I don't understand stuff like that. And I don't understand why the players accept it. I don't get it. I don't get it. There's too much money invested in these athletes to have them endangered like that. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, Bogut was, um, you know, just a real world-class jackass with that comment. It's just dumb. If you're LeBron, it's not like you're upset about it or anything because who cares what Bogut thinks, right? But it's just a dumb thing. It's just, again, I was sitting there and I was just like, this this right here, that sequence of play from Bogut where he comes in the game, he gets hitting the numbers with the pass. It was a soft pass to from Curry. He drops it. And then he's fouling people and knocking them into the cameras like an idiot. And he's just, he's just, he's just a piece of garbage as a basketball player. He's like, if you found a basketball player in a dumpster, this is what it would be. It'd be Andrew Bogut. He's tall. That's it. (laughs) That's it. So that was Andrew Bogut. Um, There was, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers are in a bad spot right now because they just don't have enough actual basketball players you know they're relying on a guy in timothy mozgov i don't even think he's a double figure scorer for his career they're relying on him to go out and get um and get buckets um you know tristan thompson they're relying on a guy who you know basically is is basically the re he's playing out of his mind trying to make sure he gets his contract um you know they're relying on that you know, they're relying on a guy like Shumpert to score, and Shump is not a scorer, as we see game after game. They're relying on, you know, I look at the box score. Um, LeBron James took 22 shots, and he only hit seven of them. So, Iggy, you know, Iguodala's holding them to 30% shooting in a game, which is great. But, you know, you see 16 field goal attempts from Timothy Mozgov, 10 from Tristan Thompson, 12 from J.R. Smith. He had two field goals. And then right there with him in the I can't shoot category, Della Vadova, three of 14. Man, these dudes, man, these are the dudes that can't shoot straight. Um, And J.R. Smith especially, you know, J.R. Smith is supposed to be able to play. He's supposed to be able to. This dude hasn't played well one game. We are four games into this series. He hasn't played well yet. He has not played well yet. He stinks. He stinks on both ends of the floor. And personally, you know, I don't like him as a player. I would not want him on my team. If I'm trying to win a ring, I don't want that guy on my team. He makes horrible decisions. He's actually one of those players that chokes to me. Like, this is a rare – every time somebody says that about somebody, almost every time I'm thinking, nah, I don't really agree with that. But with him – I've seen him too many times get into the playoffs and get into a situation where we need people to make good decisions. And he goes out there and makes, uh, takes horrible shots, commits horrible fouls. We all remember when they, they lost a playoff series to, to the Celtics after he, um, you know, 
threw threw a needless elbow at Jason Terry. And it wasn't a really a hard elbow, but he threw an elbow at Jason Terry. Terry flopped, got him thrown out of the game. He got suspended. And then you look up, they lose the series. Now, would they have lost the series anyway? Probably, but they were favored in that series. And then, and then speaking of guys that are dumb, after the game, he comes with this dumb statement about how, yeah, we should be, we should have beat them by now and swept them by now. And, you know, if I hadn't got, you know, kicked out of the game. Dude, don't say if you hadn't got kicked out of the game, like you didn't do something that was likely to get you kicked out. It's not like they just threw you out of the game because the refs were on some, you know, nonsense. You got thrown out of the game because you hit somebody with an elbow, man, and you did it for no reason. You hit a – at the time, Jason Terry, I think, was 35 years old. You hit a 35-year-old man with an elbow for no reason, man. <laughs> no reason. Um, you know, Jason Terry was – has never been a threat defensively. You, why are you elbowing him? <laughs> it was stupid. It was stupid. And, yeah, and they ended up losing the series. And, you know, the Knicks – it took him a long time to get rid of that contract because nobody wanted this dude because he's he's because it is because he rolls out there and gives you two of 12, you know, plus minus plus minus to me is one of those things you look at when it's outrageous, right? J.R. Smith was minus 27 in that game. Minus 27 in game four. The next closest guy was minus 15, James Jones and LeBron. Um, James Jones because he played bad and LeBron because he played the most minutes and they got blown out. But he was minus 27 in 88, 28 minutes. This is another thing, by the way, too. Seven man rotation, even when you're getting blown out, seven man rotation, I'm seeing 41 minutes, 38 minutes, 39 minutes. Why are you playing people so many minutes when the game was out of reach? They need to fire David Blatt and let Tyron Lue coach the team. I, I almost would like fire him this series, man. Like he's that bad. And when they talk to him, he sounds like he he sounds like um, you know what? I don't really know. I don't remember a professional head coach that sounded this out of this out of it all the time. He's really dumb. He's a really dumb man. <laughs> and he's a dumb man. He can't coach. You know, we all know famously he can't keep track of the timeouts. He's 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 ridiculous. He's just ridiculous. And this is just another guy that's not being held accountable for how inept and how bad he is. He's just not being held accountable. And he gets and they might win a championship. They might win a championship. He's gonna be one of these guys. He's gonna be one of these, he's gonna go down in history as this rookie head coach that won a title. It's in spite of him. It's in spite of him. Uh the you know, the, 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 this game, you know, I, I'm trying to, and, and, you know, my co-hosts, you know, Greg and, and Jermaine just, they didn't even, they didn't even want to do this. Like, that's why I'm doing it by myself. They didn't want to do this game because it was just, um, there wasn't much to see here. It was a bad game. You know, we hope, you know, we hope that, that we can get um, a better game, uh, a better game, a better game five. Um, we hope. And Cleveland is going to need it. They need they they need this game. They need the next game because they're running out of gas, and they don't want uh, they don't want to make this. They don't want to extend this any longer than they have to. Um, the 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 last thing that I'll, I'll say that, that I'll complain about is the officiating once again. Oh, Joey Crawford, Joey Crawford, Joey Crawford. Joey Crawford will probably likes anybody talking about him for any reason. I mean, he's like a, um, you know, he's like a peacock or something where he wants you to look at him. It's ridiculous. You know, there was a play. David Lee caught the ball on the block, tried to post up J.R. Smith. And, and David Lee's pretty, pretty solid on the block, in fact. In fact, he had a couple of buckets. He had a bucket. I know he hit a jump hook with the right hand, hit a jump hook with the left hand. You know, David Lee can post up. But for whatever reason, he he threw up an air ball on a jump hook on J.R. Smith. You know, there's a baseline left referee that makes the um, calls in the post. Then there's a there's a referee standing at half court, which was Joey Crawford. Joey Crawford calls a foul after the ball hit the floor, 
right? It was rebounded already. He waits that long, then calls a foul on J.R. Smith. And J.R. Smith's looking like, what are you talking about? And this is what I'm talking about, about zero accountability. This is, again, just no accountability. Joey Crawford goes out game after game, makes ridiculous calls to make a spectacle of himself. People have made YouTube compilations of this guy making a fool of himself so you'll look at him. And there's just no accountability. Year after year, this dude's a leading cruise in the finals. Joey Crawford is embarrassing. He's embarrassing. And he knew there was no foul there. He just wanted people to look at him. He was. It was like, you know what? This game is just too much about the players. I'm going to make a stupid call now. Because, like, you can't tell me this is very similar to the Tony Brothers thing. You can't tell me that that you can't tell me that Joey Crawford really did not. Um, you can't tell me Joey Crawford really thought that was a foul. I don't believe that. I don't believe it for a second. He's been he's been around basketball too long. I don't care if he doesn't know anything. He's still been around basketball too long. It didn't look like a foul. It looked like David Lee just threw up some garbage and it didn't go in. And and so. It, it really it really bugs me that the referees are just allowed to make these these stupid, stupid calls and nobody, you know, no, they're not held accountable at all in any way, in any way. They can tell me about this grading system and at the end of the season, all this stuff. Who gets fired, man, who gets who gets the, who gets who loses money, who anything I see the, the people they say are the best referees every year making ridiculous calls and then leading crews in the playoffs, in the finals. Joey Crawford being one of the most egregious examples going right now. Um, you know, Steve Javi famously, you know, we've all, we all know the stories if you look up anything about Steve Javi. Steve Javi used to make terrible calls against people because he didn't like them. Um, it's been discussed. Everybody knows what he was doing. Everybody knows what he was doing. And now it's like now he's this NBA officials and now analyst after he already had this, you know, high profile career as an official. Now he's retired, I guess. And now he's doing that. Now I have to listen to his horrible analysis of calls after, during the game. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, the the a couple of one a couple of quick notes about the game um, before I wrap up. Uh, Draymond Green looks really bad. And I mean, he looks bad from a health perspective. You know, he just looks really bad. Um, I hope that I hope Draymond. Um, it it I it seems like a back issue because a lot of times when you have a messed up back, as the game goes on, you start to get a little looser. And he, it seemed like he was jumping better in the second half than he was in the first half. Um, I I just hate to see injuries. You know, I, I hate to see anybody not being able to play at one hundred percent. Um, in the finals, by the time you go get all the way to June, nobody's really 100%, but uh, it snakes that he has to go through that. So I hope Draymond Green can um, can can continue to play, and I hope he can be effective for his team. Um, Sean Livingston, man, he had a uh, – Sean Livingston's turned himself into a nice player, and it is a good story. When Sean Livingston came out of high school, you know, he's from – you know, he's from Peoria, so he's from downstate Illinois. And um, so I've, I've been hearing about the kid, you know – since really i've been hearing about the kid since i was a young adult and he was a kid um and it, you know he came in out of straight out of high school and i remember when i was like i don't understand why anybody would draft this guy right out of high school I, I don't really get it i didn't think he was ready to play or anything and he ended up having these catastrophic knee injuries and that we've all seen you know on youtube i, I was actually watching one of those games at, at home when um when he when one of those games when he got hurt, I was watching. I said, "Oh man, it was such a bummer." I turned the game off because you never want to see anybody have an injury like that. Anybody, even like a guy like Bogut, who's a piece of garbage, still don't want to hear see him get hurt like that. Like when Bogut fell that time from the rim, he dunked the ball, fell and shattered his arm, and that was horrible. You know, you never want to see that happen to anybody. You know, you want to see everybody be able to um, you know, show their wares on the court and and produce. And to the best of their ability, that's what you want to see. That's what you tune in for. That's why it's entertainment. You know, it'd be like if you were watching a movie and, you know, one of the actors got hurt in the movie. You're like, well, I, I wanted to be entertained. I want the people, I want when people get hurt, that to be fake, not real. You know, you don't want people to get hurt. So um, 
it is a, I think they overstate it a lot and they talk about it too much because if you're Livingston you certainly don't want to hear about it anymore you know he's years past that a lot of rehab a lot of work on his game but Sean Livingston is a solid player now man he can go to the block and score if he has a mismatch in terms of height um you know he's still a pretty quick player um as a six seven point guard he's still pretty quick um and and he jump he jumps decent he's not a great leaper but he's got such a nice wingspan you know he he had that nice tip dunk off of vert like sean livingston man he's a pretty nice player and it's 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 it is good to see it's good to see that he's been able to put the pieces of his career back together that's really cool um he had man the nba jam style block dude where you jump up dude tries to shoot over you, you jump like this and you catch it with two hands and that man that was impressive man you don't see that very often in fact you really only see that when somebody is a dude basketball clown. um but sean livingston man he snatched that mess out of the air that was really cool and um i remember jordan used to have his thing he would do i think he did it to kendall gill once and uh, jordan and, and kendall gill and i grew up like 10 minutes from each other so you know i i knew kendall when he was coming up as far as um you know playing in the same stuff and you know being at the same places you know who the guy is because you live near him and he's in the same conference as you and all that kind of stuff so um you know you you tend to follow people's careers when they're from the same place right like not like we were buddies or something it was just he's from the same place he's from the next town over so yeah kendall was coming to the basket and um jordan jordan what jordan used to do he used to do this thing later in his career where he would wait for you to shoot the layup and he would try to pin it on the backboard with two hands before it actually hit the backboard. And I saw him get called for goaltending once doing that, where he actually did goaltending. But on this one in particular, I know he got it clean. And it's a pretty cool play because usually you don't see people do that. You know, you just don't see people do that. Gerald Wallace used to jump. And he used to come weak side. And since, you know, dude was six, seven with the wingspan, like a 40 inch vertical leap. So he was one of the most explosively athletic guys in the league. And Gerald Wallace used to come around on the weak side and jump with one hand and catch and catch the ball. There's a few highlights of him doing that. Um, but yeah, you don't see the, you don't see two hands where dude comes in your chest, two hands and dude grabs it. You don't see it that often, except like I said, in a video game. So that was a cool play. Um, and, and, and finally, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll just wrap up with this. You know, the NBA has a serious, they, they, they really do. They really do need to move those cameras. Um, I, I can't state it enough. I, I don't need, I don't need an all time great MVP of the league. Um, not this year's MVP, but he is the best player in the league. He should have been MVP. I don't need a player of I don't need any player, but I certainly don't need a player of that caliber um, cracking his head open on the camera. And, 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 and enough with the two, like he's rolling around too much on the ground. It's this kind of stuff. First of all, most people, most people panic when they get hit in the head. That's a fact. I watched Brock Lesnar. I think it was that guy Noguera hit him again. I'm not the senior mixed martial arts an, analyst. So forgive me if I'm getting the name wrong. But I think it was Noguera, and it was when Brock dropped the heavyweight title in UFC. And dude punched him in the face, and that dude flopped around on the ground like a fish. It was re- it was it was it was kind of shocking to see, but when you think about it, he's not used to getting hit in the head by somebody that hurt him. So there's a you know, you learn how to take a punch in general. You know, people don't just wake up knowing how to take a punch. And LeBron wasn't he wasn't hurt other than having his head cut. You know, they they certainly didn't need to go through any of their fake pro- concussion protocol or anything. Like where Wade gets hit in the head and then that dude's like dizzy, and got a glass jaw. LeBron's not like that. But, you know, you get your head split open, um, you know, a lot of people panic. That's a common thing. People kind of panic for a second. Um, other guys that maybe they're used to that, they don't. You know, you get hit in the head and they just jump up. Or if you're a dude like Lance Stevenson, um, I forget the bum's name. Um, he did, he used to be a center for the Miami Heat. He doesn't play anymore. Um, but yeah, that dude threw an elbow at Lance Stevenson, tried to tear his head off, and Lance didn't even go down. Um, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so it, it, Le, LeBron, you know, you, you I figured he wasn't gonna be like injured and have to come out the game, 
unless they just couldn't stop the bleeding. But, you know, s- stop with the blame and LeBron for this. This is on the NBA. They need to move the cameras. And if Adam Silver, you know, cares about his players and cares about anything, then maybe he'll change that. Um, he doesn't, and he won't. <laughs> you know, he's focused on putting soft drink logos on the stupid jerseys or some dumb stuff like that. You know, that's what Adam Silver's focused on. You know, it's just very similar how, and I'm, I'm sure he's probably going to try to carry on the pet project of David Stern to trying to expand into Europe, and he's concerned about that. As far as the safety of the players, man, he, he ain't care, man. You could do like horse racing, and they don't care about the safety of the horses either. As far as I'm concerned, he probably, that's probably what he thinks about the players. Didn't care one way or another. And you know what? Frankly, why should he, you know? We're the fans. We're the dumb ones that care about the players and want to see them do well and want to see them, you know, healthy and performing at an optimum level. You know, a guy like Adam Silver, he just put money in his pocket. He didn't care. So uh, that's my analysis of game four. I probably spent way too much time on it, frankly. Um, you know, hopefully you guys as fans, you know, enjoy my analysis or whatever. Um, you, you know, it, it, let's hope game five is better, you know. See you, basketball analysts. And that's it.